I'm going to show you how to draw as quickly and efficiently as possible using Clip Studio Paint's secret features. Well, they're not actually secret, but I never see anyone else use them, so they may as well be. Hey, I'm Gregor Tchaikovsky, and I make the comic called Loading Artist. I've been drawing these comics for a billion years now, and along the way I've learned a bunch of neat tricks on how to draw as streamlined as possible. People ask me about these techniques when they see me draw on Twitch, so I thought, hey, I may as well make a proper tutorial video so they'll stop bothering me. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin by drawing the head. Whoops, that sucks. But hey, instead of undoing and redoing a bunch of times, what if I told you you can just pinch and pull your line into the best line it can be? How is this possible? It's because I'm drawing in a vector layer. You see, when you draw in a vector layer, you're not actually drawing down pixels. You're, you're actually drawing a mathematical equation with properties that determine the curvature and thickness of the line. Or something, I don't know. I'm loading artist, not loading science guy? Scientist? You can see what I mean when I use the object tool here to select the line. See the string of dots? These are called control points and determine the shape of the line. I can move these points, or even the entire thing. I can transform it, rotate it, delete it. I can change the brush size, or even the type of brush used. Or, if I don't have any specific line selected, I can even change it for the whole layer at once. So how do you create a vector layer? Well, just go to Layer, New Layer, Vector Layer. Or, just click this little button right here. You can tell if a layer is vector, because it'll have this tiny cube next to it. You're probably wondering, wait a second, this guy didn't just move the line, he pinched it. And you're totally right. For that, I was using a subtool called Pinch Vector Line. This can be found inside of the correct line tool. In addition to pinch, there's a bunch of other nifty subtools in here. Like... Control point. Control the control points, like adding or subtracting them, as well as a bunch of other things. But I don't really use this one so much, so I'm gonna move on. Simplify vector line. This simplifies your lines by removing excess control points if it gets a little, if it gets a little bit too much. It also has the ability to remove tiny stray lines that might be lurking about. Connect vector line. Combine multiple lines into one. Also works to make circles. The closer you can bring these lines together before combining, the better the result you'll get. Redraw vector line. Feel like redrawing a line, but without actually having to redraw it from scratch? Use this. Redraw vector line width, similar to the one before, except you're redrawing the thickness of the line, not the curve. And correct line width, good for changing the thickness over an area instead of per individual line. Okay, now using everything we've learned so far, I'm gonna go ahead and draw the rest of my character. I know it's looking a little bit crazy, but that's on purpose. I'm gonna be demonstrating something huge very soon. All right. Now it's time to show off my favorite feature of Clip Studio Paint. Right now we've got all of these lines overlapping each other, so what do we do? Well, I guess I'll just start erasing the bits of the line I don't want- No! There's a much faster way than that. It's called the Vector Erase Brush. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Alright, so here's what's happening. Go into the Erase tool. Inside of it, select the Vector Erase Brush. Take note that Vector Eraser is turned on, and next to it we have the middle option selected, which is Erase Up to Intersection. And now, whatever line I touch with this Vector Erase brush, it gets erased up until it meets another line. This is super handy, and I use it all the time for my comics. I, I, I don't even like telling you this, because this is like a super secret golden goose dripping in special sauce. I don't even want this information out, what do I do? The other two options are Erase Whole Line, which, as you can guess, erases the entire line, and erase touched areas, which... well, I guess these names are pretty self-explanatory. This one acts as more of a traditional eraser, except considering you're erasing parts of a vector line, it can get a little odd. It's still useful, though. So now you know about vector layers and vector erase. That's great, and will speed up your workflow a lot, but you could be so much faster if you used modifier keys. Alright, modifier keys are a lot like hotkeys. For those who don't know, a hotkey is basically a shortcut to a tool. You just press a button, it changes to that tool, you press another button, it changes to another tool, 
and so on. But a modifier key is a button you hold down to temporarily swap to another tool, and letting go swaps you right back to whatever it is you were doing. You've probably already dabbled with modifier keys, maybe without even realizing it. Like, you know when you hold down Alt and it changes to the color picker, or you hold down Space and it changes to the hand and you, you pan around? Those are, those are modifier keys. I know, I know, I know. That's a pretty standard feature. But did you know Clip Studio Paint lets you completely customize this? Look at this. This is so handy. And look over here. Here are the two examples that I mentioned before. Hold Alt, changes tool temporarily to eyedropper. Hold Space, changes tool temporarily to hand. And as handy as all of that is, you can also set up modifier keys depending on what tool you're currently using. So for example, like for my drawing tool, I've got hold control to swap to the object selection tool, hold shift to swap to the vector erase brush, and hold shift and alt to swap to the hard erase brush. Just a heads up, similar tools will share modifier keys. For example, the modifier keys I've set up for my pen tool are also the same for my pencil tool. This is great because otherwise it would be a nightmare to keep track of. You can tell which tools Clip Studio Paint considers similar by looking at the output and input processes at the top here. Pen and Pencil are both output direct draw input pen, so they share modifier keys. However, something like the crayon tool is output direct draw input brush, so it's not similar to the pen or pencil and has its own modifier keys. So anyway, have a think about what tools would be handy to swap to and when. But don't feel like you've got to use every one of these modifier keys because that would just be incredibly overwhelming and I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that, at least not at the beginning. Maybe once you're like a pro or something, then you could be like playing the keyboard like it was a piano and you'd just be like, you know, painting the Mona Lisa, just, you know, whatever. And now for my final tip on how to draw faster, it is... Hotkeys. But wait, 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 I know, I know, I know. You're already using hotkeys. I mean, you're watching a video on how to draw faster, so it's highly likely you already use them. But are you using hotkeys in the best way? Say you're playing a game and you're using the WASD keys to move around. You wouldn't press J to jump. You'd press something easily reachable, like space. So why would you use a hotkey like J when you're drawing? J sucks. I don't even know what J does. What, what does it do anyway? Blend? Ah. I don't even use blend, and if I did, I would change the hotkey. Anyway, have a think about what tools you rely on the most, and then think about where you might prefer that hotkey to be. The goal here is to have your hand move as little as possible, because any time spent moving across the keyboard is time wasted. But the only downside is, I mean, it's kind of like learning that Dvorak keyboard. Yeah, it's faster and more efficient than the regular QWERTY keyboard, but if you ever need to use a keyboard outside of your home, you gotta be Dvorak. Then again, how often are you really going to be drawing on someone else's computer anyway? And that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully some of these tips were helpful to you. Otherwise, I kind of just wasted eight minutes of your life. But uh, otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or catch me on Twitch. I'll be live streaming all of my comics using these techniques. In addition to Twitch, you can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit. We also have a Discord server. You're welcome to join. I also have a Patreon. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Hey, am I winking on this one? I also, I also have a Patreon, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> All right, I'm wrapping up.